Only during the full moon or new moon is the tide low enough. That's when the aquaculture farmers of Tampolo Bay head to their enclosures to take inventory. Workers from the NGO Blue Ventures monitor the animal's growth. This is the group that first proposed raising sea cucumbers to the villagers 10 years ago. Once the creatures reach 400 grams, they're ready for sale. There are rules for maintaining the enclosures. We devised them with the farmers. For example, no one may enter another farmer's enclosure without his or her permission. Fishing of any kind is banned. Crabs are the one exception. They can be caught, because otherwise they'd eat the sea cucumbers. All these rules serve to protect the sea. Before aquaculture began here, hardly any fish were left in this lagoon. Today, there's a greater variety of fish, snails and crabs. That's because sea cucumbers act like natural filters. By ingesting sand, they purify it, removing organic waste, microalgae and bacteria. In a country where 70% of the population lives in poverty, the village is experiencing some rare prosperity thanks to sea cucumbers. Seraphine Kiri was one of the first aquaculture farmers here in 2009. Before the sea cucumber farm started, I had no way to raise my standard of living. Since I got my own enclosure, I've had enough money to send my two children to school. And I've bought a few nice things for my house. And I have a herd of goats now. The farmers pay 16 cents for the newborn sea creatures. But after nine months of feeding their way through the sand, the now mature sea cucumbers are worth $1.30. In Asia and elsewhere, dried sea cucumbers are a delicacy. Cultivating them benefits not only the farmers, but the entire bay and all its marine life. 